Welcome to Funny Farm Ranch. Today we are going to make a sign for the Funny Farm Ranch. We need to start preparing the wood with, we're going to use Minwax pre-stain wood conditioner. This is an oil-based, for oil-based stains. What it's gonna do is soak into the wood, give it a good even surface so when the stain goes on, it's nice and um, solid color. It won't, shouldn't have dark splotches and light splotches. I have a two inch brush. I got the pre-stain pre -stain sealer and we're gonna brush this on. Let's give it a go. It's, the wood is very old, as I mentioned. It's weathered, it's very dry. This is gonna soak in. If you use a newer wood, it might tend to puddle. This wood is just drawing it in really fast. I'm going to put an even coat on all the wood surface. I already did the back. Just trying to get in all the spots. I don't have to worry about getting too thick. It's soaking in just as fast as I hit it with the brush. It'll prep the wood. It'll give it a good surface. So hopefully, Everything comes out as planned. You might be tempted to pour this on and splash it around, but then you're going to get it soaking in a lot more in one or two spots and it'll be thinner in others. Probably want to avoid that. A good even seal is going to give you much better results. There's the groove here. Make sure I get all the edges on that. I did do the back. I'm already a third of the way through this can. This wood is very dry. It's really soaking it in. Because it's old, dry wood, this is a very important step. If you tried to put paint or stain on this dry wood, you'd end up with a lot of dark spots, a lot of light spots. It just would not look good. beautiful day today. Got a light breeze. Sunshine is out. Most of the snow is gone. It's about oh 60 degrees. Beautiful weather. Should stay this way for a few more days. Hopefully a week. If anyone has any extra rain, you could send it to southern Utah. We could use some. About halfway done here. It does go pretty quick. I'm moving kind of fast, but it does go pretty quick. And it is soaking in just as fast as I could get it there. I don't know how old this headboard was. I can tell by the way it's made that it's probably older than the 1970s. The boards where they put them in the, together in the middle had dowel rods or wafers to keep the seams and joints straight and tight. The edges have um, They cut notches into the planks, and then they had the holes to go into the uprights for the bed frame. That's not something that's been done on any or most modern furniture. I have no idea 
how this got into the wash up on the mountain. I don't know how long it was there. I am very surprised it was in three pieces. I'm very surprised we found all three pieces probably within a half mile of each other. We were just walking up playing in the water on a summer day. It was hot. And we found the first piece and set it aside and went down a little further and found the second piece. I think we found the top piece and then we found the bottom piece. Then we went down about another maybe quarter mile and found the piece in the middle. So I ran up to the top and collected all the pieces and brought it home because it needed to be a project. I'm almost done. A little bit here on the top edge. What I will do is, it's going to need an hour and a half at least to dry, soak in, and I will prepare everything else and give you a step-by-step -step after this. Just getting a couple little hard spots here. They're not wanting the brushes missing them. again once this settles in give it an hour and a half couple hours to dry I'm gonna paint the tan color it's gonna match the house here I'm gonna paint a tan background here and a tan background on this top piece and then we'll go with a green to match the house and we'll stencil the letters on there when that's all done we'll put the urethane finish on it seal it up we'll seal it front and back two three good coats and it'll last forever this was the first step i will be back in a little bit now that i have the board pre-stained condition ready for stain I am using a oil base min wax penetrating stain. The color is rustic beige. It's going to go on gray, but when I wipe it, up, wipe it off, it's going to have a beige gray appearance. Um, I think it'll look good. I already did the back. I like the results there. So what I'm going to do is use a brush, start at the bottom, work my way up, and we will see how this turns out. If you're using a brush, you definitely want to go with the grain. Sometimes I'll go against it, but ideally it works best if you go with the grain. I'm starting at the bottom. I'll put on a layer. I use the rag. I'll wipe it off and then I'll continue from there. If I start at the top and work my way down, occasionally it's going to run down and I'm going to end up with streaks and splotches um, probably not as bad because i use the conditioner but i like starting at the bottom and working my way up i'm going to do half of this bottom board i'll wipe it off and then we'll move over the longer you leave it on the more color of the stain goes into the wood i don't want it to be too gray or too dark and even though it's 60 degrees today, the sun is really warm and it's going to dry this really fast. So I'm going to try and do this fairly quick. It will lighten up just a little bit as it dries. Goes on real easy. Again, I'm using a two inch brush. You want to make sure your brush is designed for oil-based stains. Sometimes you will get one that says oil-based or water-based. As long as it says oil-based, you will be fine. the 
pre-stained conditioner. This isn't soaking in nearly as fast as the conditioner did. But the wood is dry, so it is soaking it in pretty good. But as you can see, it goes on fairly fast. It's not difficult. I am using an old rag. You can use an old cotton t-shirt, piece of sweatshirt. You can get a rag out of one of those boxes of rags you buy at the store. This is old and worn out. It was free. No sense spending money on something I already have. It's rare for me to go out and buy rags. It's just easier to use an old pair of clothes. Old shirt, old sweatshirt. If I was to use a rag to put the stain on, a lot of times I use an old sweat sock. Any sock would work, but it doesn't need to be anything special. Just something to pick the stain up out of the can, put it on the wood, get a nice even layer, and then another clean rag to wipe it off. I get into all these grooves, decorative trim. As I mentioned earlier, before the pre-stain, I had a scrap piece of this exact same wood, different piece of the headboard I didn't keep. I tested these colors, the pre-stain, the urethane finish on that scrap piece of wood. If you don't have a scrap piece of wood, I would suggest finding a spot on the back, someplace out of site give it a test make sure it's what the color you want once it's on there you can get it off it's a lot of work you don't want to do that some spots the cracks in the wood will be a little bit larger i turn the brush sideways helps you get in those cracks a little bit better most of the time I do it with wise, just makes it faster. If it looks like I know what I'm doing, I'm guessing. I did this a long time ago at a cabinet shop when I was in high school, I worked there. Back then we had fancy stuff. We sprayed it on and then wiped it off. It was a whole lot faster. But unless you have a dedicated spray booth, it doesn't make near as much mess if you put it on with a brush. Brush works fine. Just takes a little longer. As you can see, it's going pretty fast. I already did the back, like I mentioned. I already did the sides. I don't need to worry about doing the sides. They're already done. I have the standing up on a makeshift stand made out of a ladder and two by four and a couple of clamps. Might be easier to do this if it was lying flat but as you can see, I'm not getting any runs. I'm not putting it on that thick. So 
but for purposes of filming today, right now this just is working a lot easier. And I don't have to bend over, so my back is really liking that. Color's coming out pretty good. Looks old and weathered. Just a touch of gray, like it did before. I put the pre-stain sealer on it. Some people might be good with just the pre-stain sealer. They just might like that color. There's nothing wrong with that. You can paint and finish right over that without a problem. This section has got a lot of cracks from being weathered. Just gonna give it a little bit extra so it soaks in there real good. Really isn't gonna matter. This section here in the middle and this base of this pop out, they're gonna be painted. I'm just trying to get more of this oil-based stain to go in and soak into the wood just like the pre-sealer did. The wood is really dry. It is really soaking your nose. You'll see I'm holding the brush down here at the bottom. It's a lot easier to hold on and control. It takes less effort. Your hand and wrist get less tired. You can hold it way out here if you want, but then you gotta move your arm and twist your wrist and it's harder to get into the smaller spots. If you do this a few times, you'll get comfortable with how you want to hold the brush. If I was using a rag, It'd be a lot smaller than this, but I would have stain on it. I would just put the stain on just like I'm wiping it off. Wear gloves. The labels tell you to wear gloves. Probably because some law or some rule somewhere could cause cancer. Everything causes cancer depending on what label you want to read. Almost done, going to do this top section here. When I did this years ago, we didn't wear gloves. Did wear a wet respirator, so we didn't have to breathe the fumes and the overspray. Didn't wear gloves. When we got done, just Wash the hands off with mineral spirits and soap and water. I haven't died yet, so it probably wasn't too bad for me. Might make your hands change color a little bit, but eventually they go back to the color you want them. Almost there. It's getting good. I like it. Still soaking in. Last bit. No, I gotta run. That's all right. It won't hurt anything. Up here, where this pop-out piece attaches to the main part, because it's old and was soaking in the river and out in the weather for so long it warped just a little bit i'm just making sure i get stain down in there just to mainly help protect the wood but in case for some reason someone was looking down it would all look the same color to them i think we got it light spot there light spot there rag. Like I mentioned, I had a run over here. Spread it 
down a little bit with the brush before. Wipe it off with the rag. There's no sign of a run. If you didn't wipe it off, it would be there. But no one's gonna do that because you're seeing me wipe it with the rag. So you know how to do this now. A few splits and cracks and checks here in the wood. Just gonna make sure I get all these little joints after I get through with this and shut the camera off. I'll lie it down flat so in case there is any extra in those nooks and crannies it won't run across the face. Make sure I got it off the back edge here. I think we about got it. I'm not sure how long that take. Five minutes? No. 10, 15 minutes maybe at most. I'm out here in the sun. Sun's really warm. I ain't sweating. What do you think? Step number two of this. We'll leave it at this. I'll come back when this dries and I'll show you some painting and then let that dry and then we'll come back to the stencils. Thank you for watching this part. I will be back. So at this point in the video, I've already showed you that when I initially painted the Fenderos Funny Farm words on the sign that I had grabbed the wrong template or stencil out of my computer file. I had made it initially with funny farm being one word. That's initially what I thought I liked. And I asked opinions of a few people and they suggested doing funny farm as two words. So I mocked it up on the computer. I took a look at it and I thought, I agree, it looks better with funny farm being two words. It just appeared better, especially on my mock-up of the sign. So that is what I had planned to do. However, when it came time to cut the vinyl, I wasn't thinking right, and I grabbed the initial one, probably because it was the one I was looking at for a longer period of time and for some reason I grabbed the wrong one. So it, when I peeled off the stencil, it looked great. There are a couple spots I knew I would have needed to touch up with an artist brush. Nothing, nothing major, nothing unexpected. But then I stepped back and looked and noticed that Funny Farm was one word. So after I turned off the camera, looked it over, pointed it out, talked to others, grabbed a few more opinions, but I just couldn't get it out of my mind that I wanted Funny Farm to be two words. It just looked like it was going to be better. And after this sign is complete, I want to make up some t-shirts for myself and my family that are designed after the sign. So I wanted them to have funny farm as two words. I wanted the sign to be two words. So I did what I wasn't initially going to do. I took out the sander, sanded down these center portions that I am repainting beige and um, right now, just giving you a little update, I'm going to turn off the camera here. I'm going to finish painting this, get a, two or three coats of this beige chalk paint on here and um, reapply the new correct stencil and get that painted on. I'll probably show you briefly that part. You've already seen how I did it, but... Um, the process 
of me putting on the stencils and painting worked great. It looked pretty good, about as I expected. But ultimately, I decided to sand it down. So this surface here in the center is a little smoother, which is fine. Um, the outside edges that are stained, those parts out there on the edges are still going to be rough and rustic looking, which is, um, I believe, going to give it character and make it as I want it. So enough of this excitement of painting the sign. I'm going to turn this off. I will be back with the new stencil and painting, repainting the correct way, Fendero's Funny Farm Ranch. And we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Okay, here we are in the next step. I'm using the Helmsman Spar Urethane. It's indoor, outdoor. It is a clear satin. It is oil-based. So I am painting this on top of the stain and the chalk paint. This will seal the surface, give it a smooth surface. So I'm taking this step this time because, well, I made that error earlier. And once I sanded down the center beige portion and the top header and got it to a smooth surface, it just made sense to go ahead and seal it now. Um, I'm just going to show you a little bit. This is going to go on very quick and easy. I won't show you the whole process. If I don't hold the camera right, I may not show you much at all. Never realized how hard it is to hold a camera and look at it. And try and video the fat or the location of the brush. It's putting a shine on it. It's going to seal it. I already did the back. Uh, probably going to do two coats on here. It needs to sit 24 hours before I can put the stencil on. And then repaint the words. But this is just a real quick. You see what I've got down there. We are here at step four on making the sign. I already put Mod Podge on this stencil here. I'm going to show you putting the Mod Podge on here. You need to make sure the stencil is there. I've already done a pretty good job. Shouldn't take very long. I just want to show you the basics of this. Mod Podge, the same dishwasher safe. Small brush. You want to brush it to try and get the Mod Podge to go under any gaps on the stencil and fill in any grooves or seams. I put a little extra here to try and fill in where that crack was. So the purpose of the Mod Podge is just to hold the stencil to the wood and fill the gap between the stencil and the chalk paint underneath. So when you come back for step five, I believe it is, and hopefully when I paint the green on here, it won't bleed under and it should have a good crisp clean look to it. Got a crack there, so I'm gonna work some Mod Podge in there and try and fill it in just a little bit. But the purpose is to try Hopefully it doesn't go under, but the purpose is to try and push the Mod Podge against the edge of the stencil to prevent the paint that is the color of your choice from bleeding underneath and giving you a sloppy edge.
This is the same technique I did when I had the blue painters tape around and painted the beige. I'm just doing it with the vinyl stencil this time. I have a vinyl cutter. You, a lot of people do this with their Cricut or other type machines. I have a large vinyl cutter that made this simple, designed it on the computer, cut it out, pulled out the parts where the letters are, leaving the background. That's what makes a stencil. This is my last piece right here, last letter. It doesn't take long. I am this time though going to let this dry at least two hours. I want to make sure it's good and dry and has a good seal before I come back with the color. That is step four. We will be back soon. The stencil is on. It's masked off in the important areas. I am going to paint the green. Let's see how it looks. Probably going to take two coats. It's a little cooler today. I'm not sure if it's going to dry as fast. Inside the garage workshop area. It's a frigid 40 outside, which I know for some of you right now, you'd be happy to have that. I'm not worried about the cold outside. It's cloudy and it's windy. So that's what I'm avoiding. That's why I'm inside today. Just a quick coat. It's going on good. As I mentioned this time, the entire face and the beige chalk paint have been sealed with the uh, urethane finish and has dried thoroughly overnight, over 24 hours by now. And I did not use Mod Podge on the stencil because it is sitting very well and flush and holding good to the urethane finish. If you were painting this on bare wood or bare chalk paint, you would want to use the Mod Podge to get a good seal around the edges. Hopefully, I guessed right, and I'm able to skip that part. We shall see, but it looks like it's going on good. The brush is not catching the edge of the stencil at all. Should not be a problem for me. It's going pretty quick. I do think I will need two coats on this. We'll get the first one on here. I may not need two coats if I was to go back over the thin spots and go a little bit heavier. It seems to be covering good, but I'll probably put a second coat on here as soon as this first one sets up just to make sure it's a good deep green color. Just trying to make it smooth. 
as this sets, it is going to flatten out and do away with the brush strokes. It is setting down pretty good. There's a crack here in the wood, natural split. If by chance the green paint bleeds out from under, I will touch it up with a small artist brush. I tried to fill it with the beige paint several times, pouring it in there with the edge of the brush. But as it dried, it sank into the groove. The groove is there. I am okay with that. I like the old aged look to it. Hopefully this turns out to be not needing much touch up at all, if any. There's the first coat. We'll come back, put a second coat on a little bit, and move on from there. Second coat is done. Everything looks good. We'll peel off the stencil. I'm going to try and save these for a later project, maybe. When I pull this back, I'm gonna pull it at a sharp angle. If I hold it closer to the wood, it should pull back easily and have less tendency to lift the paint. The paint is still a little moist, damp. So it should peel up without pulling back. The stencil is sticking good to the surface. So I did not need the Mod Podge, which helped me save a step. You do need the paint to set up, but you don't want it fully dry when you're peeling off the stencil. You don't want the edges to pull up. are bigger letters it's peeling off a lot easier than the smaller ones
after I peel off the stencil, I will let this dry at least four hours, maybe longer, it is a little chilly today. And then I will cover the entire thing again with another coat of the polyurethane or two coats or three coats, whatever it seems like it needs. There are a couple spots along the cracks where it bled through a little bit. So I'll come back to those in a while with a artist brush with the beige paint and touch that up. It's a fun game trying to pull the centers out. You need to get in far enough wipe that off with the towel. You need to get in far enough with the pick that there's enough vinyl to not tear, but you need to get close enough to the edge so you can peel the vinyl up but then the closer you are to the edge, the more likely it's going to want to tear. Stencil is off. It looks good. It is correct this time. Funny Farm Ranch. Very good there. I double checked before I even painted. I made a splotch there when I dropped the piece of vinyl. A couple spots I scratched up, peeling up the vinyl. But when I come back and touch up where the green bled through in the cracks, I'll dab that with the artist brush and it will not be noticeable at all. That's the end of that step. Stay tuned for more. Earlier, I asked anyone who had some extra rain to send it this way. We got snow. I don't know who's the wise guy out there thinking this is funny, but water is water. We appreciate it and we'll take all we can get. The sign is finished, completed. It was pre-stained, it was stained, it was sealed with the urethane, the chalk paint for the base sealed with urethane again, the stencil was put on and painted, and then the entire thing was covered again with the urethane. So this is the finished project. Not sure where it's going to hang yet, but to go along with the sign, I have a t-shirt, very happy about this project. I'm not gonna ask you to like, share, and subscribe. You already know all that. I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments, suggestions, tips, please put them down below. I appreciate any feedback I could get. Thank you for watching.